Klebsiella, Serratia and Enterobacter. Now, these three organisms are the pathogens that live outside the GIT and when they come inside the GIT, they basically cause two types of diseases. The first disease is pneumonia and the second is UTI. Now, there is a specific differentiation between the two. Now, Klebsiella is caused in those people whose ages are more. They are, they are aged basically in the prop, uh, they occur in the elderly along with UTI also occur in the elderly and the prominent organism in that patient is Klebsiella. It also occurs in patients who have chronic respiratory diseases such as um, cystic fibrosis, COPD. Now, the other thing is that it can also affect diabetics whose immunity is less and alcoholics whose also immunity is suppressed because of high alcohol. Now, whereas serratia and anterior bacteria occur in those patients who are already hospitalized, meaning that it can occur in a hospitalized environment. Now, this organism gets into such a patient by IV catheters which are being put respiratory intubations from artificial ventilation being given to the patient or urinary catheter manipulation that is done in bedridden patients. Now the specific structure of this organism is that Klebsiella has a large polysaccharide capsule which gives this organism a mucoid appearance. Apart from this, Klebsiella also has other organisms such as Klebsiella ozonia which causes atrophic rhinitis and Klebsiella rhinoscleromatis which causes destructive granuloma of nose and pharynx. The differentiating feature of Serratia is that it forms red pigmented colonies when grown upon culture and this can seriously lead to conditions such as endocarditis whereas enterobacteria she does not have particular findings that to be noted. The only thing is all three of them are gram negative rods that live outside the GIT and that cause pneumonia or UTI. This to cause it in hospitalized patients whereas this cause in elderly with chronic infection, diabetics and alcoholics. Now the clinical features by Klebsiella is that the patients who develop pneumonia have pneumonia-like features like they are common in all of them are the, precisely the same that they would have pleuritic chest pain, they would have cough. But the sputum that would be produced by the human beings who have Klebsiella is bloody sputum. Now this bloody sputum would be current jelly-like sputum. And this can what this can damage, meaning that there is a lot of damage that is taken place in your lungs a lot of necrosis formation and that can also lead to abscess in the lungs. Similarly, similar condition also occurs in UTI that there is a lot of degenerative processes going on in the bladder and it can also lead to abscess formation in the kidneys. Now, uh, the diseases caused by Enseratia and Enterobacter is that it causes simple pneumonia and pneumonia-like features and UTI and UTI-like features, it does not cause neurosis or abscess formation. Now, how is this organism identified? On labs, what we do is we grow this organism on McConkey agar because this is a lactose fermenter. All of these three organisms are lactose fermenters. But the differentiating feature is that Serratia is a late lactose fermenter, meaning that it needs a lot of time in order to ferment lactose. So sometimes it gives us a negative reaction. Apart from that, we can do a biochemical test. Now, biochemical test also helps us to differentiate between a lot of organisms. And it also helps us to differentiate between these three organisms. Now, apart from that, how do we cure such a disease? We check for basically antibiotic sensitivity because there is a lot of resistance created between these bacteria. So no, we need to culture it in order to grow what sort of antibiotic to which this is susceptible. So what we use is we use in combination uh, aminoglycosides such as gentamicin and cephalosporins we use cefotexime.